In today's video, we're going to be going over smooth 3D camera movements. I'm going to give you the secrets to achieve that smooth 3D movement. Let's begin. All right, so first I have three PNGs in my timeline. I'm going to leave these PNGs in a Google Drive folder so you guys can follow along with me. So first things first, we're going to want to look at the bottom left, turn on these 3D layers for all of them. And now we're going to create a camera by pressing Control Alt Shift C. And I'm going to be using 28 millimeter preset. Click OK. Now we're going to create a null object. It's going to be Control Alt Shift Y. One thing I do recommend if you guys don't want to press all those buttons for the shortcuts, I highly recommend this one script called Fast Layers. It's completely free and I'll leave the link down below so you guys can go download that. So first, we're going to want to create a bunch of nulls by pressing Control Alt Shift Y until we have four. Now that I have four nulls, we're going to want to turn on for every single one of them. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the scene. I'm going to go to active camera right here, click on it, and I'm going to go to custom view one. I'm going to select my third PNG that I have, and I'm just going to drag it out in the Z axis. If we hover over, you see that little Z button, drag it out like so. And I'm going to go to the second PNG, drag it out, move it to the right. Now go back to custom view one, click on active camera again. I'm going to go ahead and fix it up a bit to my liking. All right, so now that we have our 3D scene ready to go, we're going to want to parent our layers. If we look bottom left, we can see our camera, hover over it and click on this little pick whip tool and drag it to the first null and then go to the null object we just placed it at. Click on the pick whip on that one and keep on going until we reach the last one. Like so. All of our null objects should work perfectly. So first, I'm going to click on this little drop down. Click on the drop down for transform. And I'm going to make keyframes for every single one of them. And now I'm going to go a little bit ahead. And I'm going to go to the Y rotation. Point it at the first PNG and go to the position. Move up just a tad up until we get nice and close into the middle. There we go. That should be centered. So now we should have this first. That does not look smooth at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag these two keyframes and push them out just a bit. So now I'm just going to highlight everything. Press F9 on the keyboard. And now we should have this smooth zoom in. And what I do personally for the graphs is I use Flow. It's really, really helpful and I can use different graphs just by saving different presets and applying them. If you guys don't have the script Flow, we can highlight the keyframes and go to the graph editor. But as we can see, if we click on it, nothing will happen. We can't even edit it. One thing we can do is right click and we can go to the edit speed graph or we can go back to the value graph, click on the position name and right click separate dimensions. And now we can edit the graph like this. Now Next, I'm going to go to the second null above it. I'm going to do the drop down, transform again. I'm going to make keyframes for all the transform stopwatches. And I'm going to move up a bit more like so. And I'm going to look at the second PNG. Mess around with the rotations that we have available. In this case, I'm going to use Y and stare at the next PNG. And I'm going to move in with my position keys so we can get closer and move towards the right and we can also mess around with our x rotation so we can go like up and down i'm gonna do like like a little bit looking up so if we do this we're gonna want to move down our position key go down we're gonna want to highlight everything f9 on the keyboard you guys are probably wondering why do we need so much null objects well if we open up the nulls by pressing u on the keyboard we can see that these keyframes overlap and by having our keyframes overlap means that there's always continuous movement and there's never any stops whatsoever. So that's what creates that smoothness. So this is the graph I'm using in the flow chart and this is what I have in terms of the keyframes. I pushed it out a little bit and we can turn on motion blur for our PNGs with this little button. We just click on the PNGs and we should have motion blur. And I'm going to open up my second null object so I can get a reference to where I'm going to start it. So as we can see, it's moving a little bit here. So I can probably make it start right here. Press this little drop down again, transform, make the keyframe go out more and we're basically gonna try to aim it at the next png first i'm gonna move my y rotation to aim it at our third png and i'm gonna move in 
like so. I'm gonna move it towards the right a little bit and the Y rotation just to get a, a little bit precise and maybe move our X rotation and zoom it in. And there we go, we should have this. So now I'm gonna highlight everything F9. Now we're not done yet. I'm gonna show you guys the secret sauce that I like to put on every single time I make a 3D scene. So I'm just gonna spam you until all my layers are closed down. And I'm gonna make a adjustment layer by pressing Control Alt Y. And I'm gonna put on a shake preset. I'm gonna leave this link down below. You don't need any plugins to use this. So once you guys have the camera shake preset, we can make another adjustment layer by pressing Control Alt Y. And I'm gonna add in a a transform effect go ahead and scale it into like around 103 to like 104 i'm gonna go ahead and do 103 for this next part i'm gonna show you guys how to do this professional depth of field so i'm gonna click on png1 and i'm gonna apply the effect called bcc lens blur if you guys don't have the plugin bcc you guys can use gaussian blur and that'll be kind of similar to this effect. But first, I'm going to decrease the iris scale to around 8 and move the gamma up a little bit to like 250. Make a keyframe for iris scale. Move your playhead a little bit forward until we're head on with the PNG. And once we're looking at the PNG, we're going to go ahead and move this to zero. So now if we play it back, we can have that camera blur. But I'm going to select my first PNG and press U on the keyboard. And I'm going to highlight all the keyframes. Press F9. And I'm going to move both of them a little bit forward. So now if we play the video, we can have that camera blur. Highlight the keyframes, press Ctrl C, go to the second PNG, Ctrl V, open up your keyframes, drag them up. The final keyframe should end when we're looking at the PNG. And I'm going to do this for the last PNG. And I'm going to show you comparison with the blur and without. As we can see, that blur does a lot. If you guys want to become a super cool editor like me, check out my website. And I have a whole bunch of free stuff on there that will deeply improve your edits. Take care.